All right, what's popping, y'all? It's your boy DeAndre, player number 288. We back with the Squid Games Aftermath podcast, and I am joined today with a very special guest, our friend Jesse, player 220 in the building. What's going on, Jesse? How you feeling today? What's popping? Hey, what's <laughs> up? I'm here. Let's do this. Let's get, let's get into it. Let's spill the tea. I'm ready. Okay, we go. Hey, we ready to spill it all because Jesse got some things to get off her chest. You know, some people have been saying some things that ain't true all the way. And we need to get down to the nitty gritty. We need to get down to the the apple seed inside and we need to figure out what is really going on. So before we get into all that, I want to ask Jesse, Jesse, welcome. What made you apply to the show? So I had just sort of um, wrapped up like five years of medical recovery. Um, when I was in college, I was diagnosed with epilepsy and I had a brain tumor and I had surgery. And um, that summer kind of marked my like freedom officially from all of it. So I was just like looking for big, crazy things to do that were like, you know, carpe diem moments. <laughs> and I just happened to be scrolling Instagram and one of the casting directors like shared a thing about it. I think it was the first day they opened it. And I said, <laughs> that looks fun. And I applied. And next thing I know, like a month later, you know, they started the casting process with me and, uh, and now we're repping. Uh, <laughs> okay. Have you did you watch Squid Games prior to you trying to get cast on the show? I did hop on the Squid Game train when it came out. I thought it was an awesome show. Um, I figured they would make a reality show out of it. Um, I didn't know they were gonna go ham and like cast 456 people though. Yeah, no, same. I was like, they might try and do something, but I think it would be like 30, 40 people, and then right? they'll do it like that. That's exactly what's going through my head. So, people who don't know, can you explain what epilepsy is? Yes. So um, epilepsy is a condition causing seizures. Different people have seizures present in different ways. Um, for me, my biggest symptom was just like a loss of memory. I like to joke with people. It's like how when you black out drunk, you can't remember the next day, but you were definitely doing shit. Um, that's how it was for me. Like, don't tell publics, but I accidentally walked out with a bag of groceries one time in college. <laughs> hey, look, it's corporate America. They got enough money. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so luckily, when um, when I graduated, I graduated college early. They found they found a brain tumor. Luckily, ha! Um, and I had surgery, and I've been cured ever since. And it's awesome. <laughs> That's excellent. That is a beautiful story right there. We actually, you know, if you didn't know, our friend Spencer, player two nine nine, who was on earlier, also had cancer. Uh, it wasn't epilepsy, but it was a different kind. I cannot remember the exact kind, but. Dang, everybody got these crazy comeback stories. I'm missing my story. <laughs> things to, to learn about people in there. It's nuts. <laughs> okay, okay. So when, you know, you apply for the show and then months go by, months go by, months go by, and then it's getting down and they finally get the call. What's kind of going through a call that you're accepted on the show and you're getting ready to pack your bags and get ready to leave the next morning? What's kind of going through your head? I like went back that whole week before I flew out and I like rewatched the whole show. I was so in YouTube for like, I was making my strategies. Like I, if I had gotten to marbles, I would have whooped somebody. Um, like I had, I had a technique. Um, and I was like, I don't know. I didn't know what to expect from like the dorms because they gave us a lot of notes, right? Like about what it would be like, but it, it's a whole different thing, like setting up camp, you know? <laughs> and mm. who are you gonna meet? Who are you gonna talk to? What alliances are you gonna form? I was ready for a social game. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. See, I was, uh, I didn't think the alliances would go too much in hand with the game just cause I'm thinking it's just exactly like the show. And so mm -hmm. only tug of war, I guess, would kind of be an alliance thing, but <laughs> I wasn't really thinking too much about that. Um, okay, so we get on, we get in the plane, we go to London, we are on the show. So we're gonna jump right into it, man. We're gonna come back to the extra fluff stuff too, but we gonna jump all the way to warships. We gonna get right into it. So Jesse, when you walk into the room with the eight lines and you see these lines, because everyone's talking about Battleship, battle or not Battleship, everyone's talking about Tug of War, Tug of War, Tug of War, it's going to be Tug of War. Did you think it was going to be Tug of War too? I was so sold on it. So, like, in the dorms, they had those, like, illustrations on the walls in the order, just like they did on the original show, and we were looking, 
and we're going, oh my God, tug of war is number three. It must be tug of war. It must be tug of war. And they threw us, they gave us like a whole chicken breast for dinner the night before it. And everyone was like, the boys were like, oh, we're bulking up. So I was going out of my way to like talk to the big dudes like that whole night before. And I attached myself to my friend Riley. Uh, so when we got into that room with the lines, I like totally... I'm so bad. I totally ditched like my good allies and friends in there and just walked straight over to them and was Damn. not budging. Like they could not have kicked me out of that line. If they <laughs> Ruthless. Wow. So she, she and she had her plan together. That's good. I, I mean, you're one of the few that had the plans kind of going in before even the game. <laughs> Yeah, they, uh, I was like talking up the dudes in the line. They were trying to, we were trying to like negotiate those last few spots, right? When everybody had lined up and the guys are looking around like, who can we kick out? Do we need more people? They're looking at me at like Radhika or like the two little tiny girls on this team. And I'm like, I'm a fitness instructor. Like, come out. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. She stood her ground. She stood her ground. <laughs> so how did you feel about the people on your team? I know you just kind of said you kind of became allies with them a few couple days a day or i guess the day prior uh did you you know how did you feel about them in particular like overall yeah. i mean like i knew the guys on that team like i think my closest like friend ally was probably riley and i mean mark was on my team he was my circle captain so like i knew the dudes we were friendly um but like I wasn't necessarily like thinking like if it was tug of war that these were going to be my crew, you know, headed out. I was just thinking, what's the best thing I can do right now to save myself in a tug of war game? This. <laughs> That's smart. That's really smart of you right there. So did you end up, you saw the battleship, uh, you saw the warship drawing on the wall, yes? Yeah. And looking back, I actually had a conversation with somebody in the dorms about it. Because I remember the first day we were like, what is the boat? Like, what could you possibly do in the water with squid? Mm -hmm. And somebody mentioned, they were like, it could be like that game where you like, you like try to guess where like people are and they stand in the ship and the connection, it just never clicked to me that they would think of something like, like warships, like battleship or squid game. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I saw that too. And I was looking at it and it just it just doesn't come to your mind. I'm thinking people in a boat. So I'm, you're always thinking the biggest, craziest thing rather than just kind of thinking small. Is it a giant water balloon fight on a pirate ship? Like, you don't know. <laughs> you don't. I thought they were going to put the beds together and we were going to be like, I thought that was about the bed. Honestly, my dog was like, oh, you know how on the TV show at nighttime they were going at each other and they put the beds up as barricades. I was thinking that like, okay, oh we God. might have to like set up a defense or something like you that. You remember that one night in the dorms when they like shut us down early um, and everyone thought it was night brawl night. Like they were going to do a midnight challenge, but they were really just handing out chapstick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. the paranoia was real. Oh, my yeah, it was crazy in there. It was crazy. So we get you, you got go in there, get your team, get your squad, and then they pull out the balls. Your team number three, three? Mm -hmm. Team number three, yours is the first one pulled out versus team number one. Oh, yeah. So are you getting up? We were team one. You were yeah. team one. Okay. And ours was drawn first, and then they pulled three, and we're looking down the line, and we're like, <laughs> like, we got this. Are you kidding me? Like, I got like two. And we're like, it might be a little struggle, but we're fine. <laughs> like, Y'all yeah, chilling. Yeah, we were. We walked out of there. We were like, bye, bitches. Like, we'll be back. <laughs> hey, it was all it was all cool and beans in there, you know, sleeping with the cool side of the pillow. I know. Not for long. So when you Yeah, hey. And then when you so when you're walking out and then you get into the room and you see the setup. What's kind of going, the first, like, what's the initial thoughts going through your head when you see the setup? I, okay, so this is where story's got to be set straight. All right, so our team walks into this battleship arena. I was one of the first people in the room. And I looked at it and immediately knew what it was. And three seconds into entering the room, I shot my hand up. I said, I'm calling, I'm calling, I'm calling. I'm going to be captain. Like, that's me up there making the decisions. And, like, the, the bros were like, what? What, I mean, they, didn't, they had no clue what it was, but I was like already in it uh, and committed. Whether I had intended to or not, I just, something in me was just like, go for it. Like, this is your moment. You have to step up. 
So you raised your hand before you heard the rules. Yeah, I had no idea. I just, I thought at that time, I was like, I know this game. I don't want to be in a ship. I don't want to just be sitting there. I want to be calling the shots. Um, uh, what what was like, what was, I know you want to be in control and you definitely had that. Um, but, you know, you raise your hand and whatnot. And then they explain the rules. Because I'm sure, you know, you raise a hand and everyone kind of just like, you know, just moseying on in, not really thinking too much. And then they give the rules out. Do you still want to be captain after they give the rules? So I think they actually told us after we picked our captain. Um, so we, I like shot my hand up in the air and it was actually me and Radhika who were um, my, my eventual lieutenant who were kind of back and forth between being the captain. And they asked, you know, team, will you deliberate? Like you need to pick your captains. And the boys kind of all just like looked at both of us and were like, who's got more experience? <laughs> but none of them volunteered at all. Like none of them tried. It was me or her, the two girls on the team. Um, but then they gave us the rules and we look at each other and we're like, Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Um, so do you think you jumped the gun a little bit? Um, like yes and no. I, I still like I don't regret it because I think like at that point in the game, I was really looking to like make some kind of move. Like I wasn't content sitting in the background and I just knew like I did not want my fate to be left completely out of my hands, you know, because all you can do in those ships is sit there and wait. But at least if I'm captain, it's it's kind of like Spencer with the umbrella. Like you go out fighting, not surrender. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I know I know a little bit about surrender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, so, but I don't. You know, I understand that. I would want. I probably seeing that. You know, mm -hmm. want to be captain myself. Um, so, with, before you, you know, officially become captain, was there anyone else trying to be captain? No, me and Radhika were the only two who volunteered ever. 432 is full of shit. If he raised his hand, I didn't see him or he did it in his mind because none, I'm kidding, I kid you not, like none of the boys even tried. And they asked us to deliberate and they all just kind of looked at me and said, you're confident. I trust that. You know how to play this. I said, well, guys, do you want to put this to a vote just so it's fair? I asked them if they wanted to have a second. No, no. I think we're good with you. And that was that. Oh, wow. That was that. Just that simple, huh? Quick and easy. I don't know what this um, argument that's being talked about uh, was. I don't okay, know. Okay, well, got you. Well, I mean... I, you know, I might be having somebody else that was on your boat as well come on the podcast later, and you know, I'm gonna ask. Them. So I mean, yeah, we gotta have a couple people on your boat actually coming on now that I think about it. So um, definitely, I know. Take your story, and that's you know, you were the captain. You pretty much, I mean, it's your word, and you were the captain. So and of course, I believe you and whatnot. So right, that was maybe that. some. They were really yeah, that was that between. Um, me and Radhika because she plays with her boyfriend a lot and I had played with my brothers and they were like, who's played last? You know, it, it was really between the girls um, was the only argument that went down. Okay, cool. All right. Well, that, so we got Jesse and Radhika as the captains versus Brad's team. Yeah. I, Brad's team. Brad's team. Mm -hmm. um, so we have that going down. It's time to get started. You start setting up, so you decide to move pieces around, which was also shown in the show. There was some pieces laid and then some got moved. Mm -hmm. How did you kind of decide where to put your pieces? Okay, so that situation, A, we had a very short period of time to figure out who and where things were going. So um, at first there was just a lot of kind of shuffling people around and like, I mean, I, one of my biggest regrets to this day is not pulling that battleship up to just like the front, front row, like out of reach because nobody guesses that, but it's just like heat of the moment type things. And also yeah. I want to point out that like in a normal battleship game, it's, it's kind of set up like a laptop, right? Like you can look down at the whole grid while you place your ships, but this I'm like staring out at life-size pieces. It's kind of hard to tell where things are going. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I switched Brighton ship, I was actually trying to move him over to like the very edge of the grid, like one spot, 
one spot. It would be C1, C1. Uh huh. I wanted yeah. to like put them right up against the edge, and he said, "No, no, 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 no. Like that's too close for comfort." But if they had been there, they would have been fine. Yeah, that was that was a spot. I mean, he didn't yeah, listen. We ran okay. out of time before I could get them to move it, but that. So how, how much? Tumbles. How much time did they give you? We had five minutes total to debate where to put the um, put the ships. Have people pick them up. Have people pick where they wanted to stand, um, and then you could move people around if you wanted to. So when everyone is set in their spots, does everyone seem satisfied? I let the guys pick where they wanted to stand. I didn't try to um, switch anybody's position around, but um, I think our team was actually feeling really confident before the game started. Um, I think the guys felt confident in us. We both had experience playing it. A lot of them had said they had never, never played the game, didn't know how it worked. Um, I mean, we were ready to roll still. <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to stay confident. Okay, cool. Well, we got the places in the spot. We feel confident. It's game time. Ready, set, go. So you start firing the missiles and we missed a couple at first. So did you have, I mean, it's look, there's no strategy behind picking where you want to go, except somebody said, uh, B actually said C3 is a common spot that people always put their pieces in. You did put a spot in three, three C3, which she might have a point on that. You know, I mean, not every ship, not every team put a ship in C3, but that was smart on her. And I probably wouldn't have thought that. Um, so yeah, you're putting in Miranda spots. So there's not really a strategy on how to, pointed out i don't like how some people were like well the captains aren't good because they're yeah. missing they're missing i'm like it's not the captain's fault it's just no. literally random luck so that's how did you feel about hearing people blaming captains for really missing no spots? yeah you really just gotta get lucky at that point um yeah we missed a few to start i mean so did the other team it's it, you know it's like a cat and mouse game but what they didn't show you the way they edited the show was it made it look like Brad's team whooped us and went boom, 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 boom with our battleship. But they found ours and almost immediately after, um, and they cut this moment and it was so cute and made for TV. My first successful guess was D5 um, and that was a hit. And I, I was like, also context, right, for battleship was that every single turn, um, it was like, pick up the peg, wait a minute and a half talk with your team wait a minute and a half put the peg in wait like five minutes so like stress is building very quickly just because of how long <laughs> it's taking to get the answer um but i was like i was just like we need a hit we need a hit and i went all right eff it like my last name is depetty there's five people in my family d5 and then boom like we were back on the board and so they whooped our battleship we whooped their battleship and now it's an even game you know, okay. Yeah. So yeah, your guys and also your guys' game took the most time on TV. So definitely, they really focused on your guys' game because there was you know big characters on both sides of the ships, uh, essentially. And so yeah, so you know you're missing, hitting, missing, hitting, and then you both are tied one to one. How's how are you feeling after it gets tied up? Like what's kind of going through your mind? I think so. Um, by this point, I'm already feeling guilty because. You know, I've lost five people on my team. Some of my really good friends were in that group. I mean, like like Mark, for example, like made that sacrifice of going into the room and picking for the circles. And now I'm like literally watching get eliminated in front of my eyes. Um, and so I was just really trying to focus on like evening it up as soon as possible because now my life is on the line again, you know? We're even up, but it ain't over yet. <laughs> yeah, it's not over yet. So yeah, um, for context, uh, one Jesse's team had eliminated the four ship of one four two one eight eight three eight nine three four three, and her team lost sixty eight forty one four two two four four seven and four five two. And so yeah, the pressure you can see on TV like once it's tied, the pressure's hitting. Like you, it gets a little tense. The music riles up a little bit. Everyone's faces starts getting a little keen, <laughs> and next thing you see is uh, c4 getting hits uh -huh. and then they go to pan to you and it looks like you're freaking out it's like you start crying all right uh, all right let me tell you <laughs> everyone said 
I was not crying at that point, and that edit is mean. <laughs> Between takes, okay, it was stressful. I was just sitting down and I was go like this. I was just waiting, okay, waiting. <laughs> they got you. <laughs> I was like, please. <laughs> also, I want to point out they had a couple misses before they found that. Also, you know. Yeah, they did. You could see on TV. I was pausing it and watching it. Yeah. Long game. Um, our game. Yeah, no, I could I could see where the misses were um, and how they were editing it. Like, boom, like they just hit it when I saw like another piece that missed. So yeah. definitely. Um, but yeah, they they show you stressing and they um, they show you and Radka kind of like hugging and like thinking, you know, not, not thinking, but making it look like you're thinking the game is over and Brighton starts chirping and tells you like he pipes up a little bit and says, hey, like, Keep it calm. Keep calm down. Calm down. Did you hear him saying that to you during the moment? Yeah, I, re I mean, I remember that. Like, we weren't crying. We were just like, oh, well, you know, like, the, and of course, it was like the two person vote. So there's like way less leeway, you know, um, at least with a three person, you have like an extra turn, maybe. But we were like, oh, crap already. <laughs> <laughs> like, not the two boats. Yeah. Uh. Love all of them. <laughs> oh, then we go back on the board, like almost immediately. She yeah. Back. So, so yeah, they hit your boat, but then you hit theirs. You hit right. their boat, and so when you hit theirs, it's like okay, like we got a chance because they still have a chance to miss. So what's kind of? So now, what are you feeling? Racing against the clock, basically. I mean, I'm. We, we found their boat, they found our boat, but we're just now in a race to see who can finish the puzzle piece first, you know? Um, luckily we figured out that theirs was headed like down um, with enough time that we had like one more round of leeway. Yeah. Um, and obviously everybody is like freaking out at this point um <laughs> you know we're just like please 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 the boys in the three boat in the back were probably just like all right whatever like you know? yeah, no they were they were chilling they're just chilling we're safe they don't care they're like this is boring i want my oatmeal um <laughs> but um oh man okay also so, yeah no go ahead, go ahead this sequence of events is that they make it look like Brighton was calling the shots for our team. And that is not how it went down. Every single turn, me and my Lieutenant, me and Radhika were looking at the board. We we're just like pacing to see like, all right, we're doing the maths, like B, like where could three or, you know, where would three fit in within where we've guessed? Um, where should we go sideways, up, down? And every turn I'd be like, all right, guys, we're gonna go for G3. Do we all agree? Everybody in agreement? And all the boys would nod, and then I would put it in. So his little nod on camera was just a group consensus. He wasn't there like, yeah, yeah, go for it. Like, that's my call. <laughs> <laughs> that game was the quietest Brighton was through the entire show. Hey, I mean, I could I, I could see it, you know, and I, I heard some things afterwards and whatnot. Um, so, how do you feel about how do you feel about like the edit of how they made it look like how like and you're watching it and you're like whoa like this is not what I remember what's kind of what are you thinking when you see that one of the biggest pieces that makes me angry that they left out um, because it really makes us look like we were struggling and like I mean they showed that it was a close game like that it was one to one hit but. The missing piece of the puzzle is that they actually had two places left to guess um, where they could have missed and we could have gotten that last one in. But one of our teammates yelled out the last coordinate of our two person vote to the other side, screamed it out. That's Let a that drop right there. Uh huh. Wow. Wow. Oh my oh, gosh. You trick them. No. Come on. Are you kidding me? So like if there's anybody to blame on our team, it was him. Wow. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's deep. That's vile right there. Because we they could have missed and then boom, we would have had their last we would have had that last hit. We knew exactly where that boat was. We just needed So why do you why do you think this individual did that? 
I think because it was at that point of like a 50 50, like they had two spots left they could go. Because right? they were safe anyways, though. So why would they do that? Um, actually, no. He was already out. Oh, really? Oh, it was somebody in the sunken boat. Mm hmm. He's on the eliminated battleship. Yep. And just decided to pipe up. Um, I think he was maybe trying to help, like, kind of like how, like, on Rick's team, um, they were between, like, those two spaces and everyone was calling out. I think he was trying to throw the other team off by being so obvious. But, like, come on, dude. <laughs> Ugh. But I guess yeah, he was to lose yeah. at that point, you know? I mean, yeah, they maybe could have took it as a bluff and not picked it. So do you right. know if he was being intentional or do you even know, do you think he was doing it like as a psych you out type of moment? Um, I, I mean, I think there might have been a little bit of like resentment coming through. You know, maybe he was just trying to be like, F you, like I'm out. So F you guys. I, but I do think it mostly came from just a sort of stressed out place of like, maybe this will help. <laughs> You know, but I, I would have much rather left that up to chance, I think. Yeah, um, that kind of sucks, because then you know, it's like, you hear a number, and it's like one of the numbers you could pick, and it's like, you know, it's, you can't really trust anyone, so I could see maybe he could think the other way or not, but I mean, that's still kind of, it's not his, it's not his position to do that. I mean. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that was really frustrating. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, that's, that's, that's a whirlwind. That's like, a, wow. That's completely changes a lot of context behind things but we find out that G Wait, Ajita, it Ajita. <laughs> Ajita, it is mm -hmm. uh so then g3 is chosen it hits you guys lose the game and red wins the game so we have two seven zero eliminated and four three two eliminated uh four three two is obviously not happy nobody would be and then 220 yourself and 352 Radica is also eliminated. And this ends your journey. So when you hit and you get eliminated and whatnot, what's kind of, how's the mood in your guys' boat area? Because I know you guys have a little time to kind of like, de I don't want decompress, quote unquote. I was not happy. Um, like, especially <laughs> given the way that last round went like knowing we were so close and like honestly somebody like ripped the power from my hands and fate at that moment um like i was really upset and it was such a long process to like even get to the end of the game you're strung out i was so stressed to like um i mean again no i didn't actually cry um <laughs> you didn't you <laughs> snap at Brighton a little bit he actually props to him he came over and he was like hey hey like it's okay like you're gonna go home to see your family um and I was like I don't care I don't care I'm supposed to be here like <laughs> it's actually like haunting me for like like months that they were gonna show that part of of the elimination because it was so uncute and uncalled for but I just like I'm so competitive um, and that last little thing, like when he said that last part, it just kind of put me over the edge a little bit. Um, but I mean, once we got to the hotel afterwards, like after elimination, like everybody was kind of chill, like Brighton hung out with us. We were having a good time. Um, because at the end of the day, that game is what it is. It's luck, you know? Yeah. There's and that's, really... just what, that's just what the universe had uh, in mind for us that day. Yeah, no, it wasn't in the cars, unfortunately. Uh, that's how this game seems to be working out you know you kind of right place right time a lot of times you know i mean some of the people you haven't seen a, pe a, a peep from them throughout the whole show and they're still in the game you know no, a lot of people actually i was talking to one of my friends who made it to um almost like right before glass bridge like he made it to top 30. And oh, no spoilers though no spoilers he's totally good <laughs> <laughs> no spoiler. <laughs> oh, glass. So bad. He wanted a glass of milk. You mean he was almost to get his glass of milk? Correct. Right. Yeah. We're bored. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I mean, you never know, kind of, what's the next turn. But I mean, you could have had somebody where you know they made it through red light, green light, then they got in the circle line that they didn't have to choose, then they got in a boat that they didn't even have to do anything. They were just like, all right, I'll be here. And then, you know, they didn't even get looked at 
uh, in any votes or anything like that. So it's kind of just, you know, some people got eliminated because the person didn't know who that person was. And some people got eliminated because they did know who it was. So it's, it's literally a toss up. And once I figured that out about the game, after everything was said and done, it kind of like set me at ease and like, okay, like, the, the luck was on a lot of people's sides to even get exactly. to a certain point. Yeah. I think it, it really just, like you said, right place, right time was a lot of, of especially those earlier games. Um, yeah. I mean, even down to, you know, the ones you see in the TV show, you know, you just sometimes have to be lucky. Um, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, opening up a box and then, you know, that's, that's your fate. And right. so like whoever thought that was going to be kind of going into so fast though. <laughs> I mean, that's as, as it kept going, it just gets it, it would be worse and worse and worse. So like you're feeling because you get out in the most silly ways where it's like, are you yeah. serious? Like I didn't even get a chance to kind of do anything. Right. And we're going to see more of that to come. Oh, best believe. Mm -hmm. So. So, yeah, you end. Uh, that's the end of your journey. Tell me a little bit about uh, when you get home, you're back in the States and you're you know at your house what's kind of how's your mood like what's your what's the vibe going on with you coming off of that adrenaline high was like i like took the whole week off of work and i was just like dang like this like this actually happened like we were here we we met these people you know i mean i'm so tired i food was amazing <laughs> that week <laughs> I had lots of salt and sugar, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> but um, I think like, it just like really starts to settle in after that first week that like, yeah, like we really did that, you know? We are the original cast. Like, I think it's really cool now, like to this day, like, I mean, if people think about 220 from Squid Game, like there's not one from the original show, it's me. And if yeah. they ever do this show again, somebody's gonna be like, who is 220 in season one? It's me, right? We're all part of this and crazy thing for the first time. OG casts are always the best. <laughs> oh, 100%. That's, I mean, it's an honor to kind of, that's one thing about enticing about the show too, is like, it's not been done before, you know? Right. You can do like another Survivor or Big Brother, which are iconic shows in their own right, but they get in rotation so much. So when the next season comes around, the per season, maybe two seasons prior, completely forgot about to a sense. And, you know, nobody knows. But at season one, everybody, you can pick up people from season one if it's to show that someone loves and has a fan base and everyone knows who that is. Right. And they'll relate everyone's game kind of back to somebody on that cast. Even with a giant cast like ours, like it's numbers at the end of the day. You don't have to remember names, it's numbers. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we'll, uh, We'll backtrack a little bit. Can you give me a little insight on anything that you had to deal with throughout the game that was one of the most challenging, I guess you could say, either mentally, physically, um, up before you get to uh, warships? Um, I think like one of the hardest things about the dorm life was um, like it wasn't the beds, like I was happy, we, it was not Survivor, right? We had a bed, we had a pillow, we had a blanket, so I was good with that. Um, it was like this sense of like timelessness, you know? So we're, we're completely immersed in this world. We have no idea what time of day it is. We have no idea what the sun looks like anymore. And, you know, so when things happen, everything is just so heightened from reality they're like people on twitter right now are like why are they all so crazy and excited and it's like <laughs> we just were like things were happening you know um i but i felt like there were so many perks to being there on the other hand you know really cool people to talk to i loved not having phones um and distractions and even like makeup like little things like that you just really have to connect on a human level um it was really hard to keep track of everybody's names, though. Yeah, a hundred percent. You're asking the same person every every five minutes. What's your name again? What's your name again? It's like I remember. People, I'm not gonna remember, but. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I remember meeting you. I'm meeting you. We were by the stage, uh -huh. and it was if you remember when the, uh, the magician was doing his little magic <laughs> show thing, and that's I think I remember. I some people I just vividly remember remembering, and you were one of them because you said you did theater, and I was like, oh, I do too. I'm like, I'm I'm about theater, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
And I'm so, so oh my gosh, we should have had a talent show earlier. Um, I know we should have. I was we was ready to go, and they were like, "Oh yeah, I forgot. I haven't mentioned this yet. They told us we couldn't get on the stage in yeah. the dorms. I forgot about that. I know that one hit me. The I know I was ready to go because we were like, "How oh, he says he said get on stage." I was like, "I wasn't trying to," but I mean, look, I didn't care. <laughs> would, would you have gave the people a show? Would I have dated the people in the show? No. Would you have gave people a show? You keep cutting out right in the middle. Would of you me. Would you have given the people a show if you were able to oh, go up on the stage? I was ready. Okay, I wanted to. Like, I kept joking with my friends. Um, like I was going to get on one of those balconies, you know, that overlook the whole thing and just start giving them. Ironically, my go-to song was going to be My Heart Will Go On from Titanic. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. That I is. Uh, manifesting my own fate there. Um, that <laughs> is manifesting your own fate. I mean, dang. She was. She was, she ended up like dang Leo and Donna DiCaprio in the film, girl. <laughs> you want to, you needed to channel your inner rose right there. Come on now. There's room on the door. <laughs> there wasn't no room for you, apparently, even though there was. Oh my gosh, that is funny. Wow. That would have been funny if you actually got to sing it and then that happened and then it's like, Dang, you just sang it into existence. I know. Hey, that would have been a whole moment, though. <laughs> that would have been a moment. But unfortunately, probably wouldn't have shown it, sadly. No, but do you, you I, remember when Anna had her little group going in the corner? They did mm -hmm. Stand By Me, and they were so quick to shut that down. <laughs> I know. It was like, geez, come on now. I mean, we ain't got nothing to do all day. So we don't... cute, too. Yeah, I mean... It was, I, I need the B roll. I need the B reel. I need all that. I will sit down and watch a whole 12 hours of red light, green light. I will do that. But maybe, maybe, maybe we'll get it as a present at the end of the show. Hopefully they do. I'm, I'm praying that they give us what we want. And that is the footage. Please drop it. So much. Drop happens. it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. All right. So we'll wrap it up a little bit. I appreciate you coming through on here. Is there, is there any last, you know, things that you kind of want to say that you, you know, want to get off your chest before we get out of here to you kind of, you know, All finish right. your tale? Yeah. I will just say, overall, no hate towards Brighton. I think he played the game how he wanted to play it. His personality is very polarizing. Like, he never did anything to me on the show to make me hate him. Um, like, I thought he was chill, honestly, most of the time. But now that I've seen it, if he wants to throw shade, I'm ready to tell everybody the real truth of what happened um, because he's set up, he's got his reality TV career. All I have is me and my reputation. So, <laughs> 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 um, Robin, unless you want to come knocking, I'm here for you. Um, I'm dead. <laughs> All right, come come get me. Um. <laughs> the rival, I was, you know, it's funny. Uh, yesterday on the podcast, and I was talking to Austin on it. It was funny because I was talking to him about you and Brighton, and you know, on TV, it makes it look like you guys are kind of going at each other. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm, this kind of thing brings me back to like high school a little bit, where the jock is fighting the musical theater kid and <laughs> it's going at it like that and i was like oh these are two worlds that should not be colliding and they're going colliding and this is kind of what it came to so that's kind of a funny thing i was thinking about when i was watching it on tv because i know both you guys and that i don't know if that ever crossed your mind at all but so that definitely was like this is, this is kind of what we need right here. This is a battle that has been going on for centuries. Oh my God. I'm joking <laughs> I should write like the TikTok Squid Game musical <laughs> get a rap between me and Brian. <laughs> hey, I'm ready for it. I am ready for it. Maybe, maybe, maybe if you get a season two, we can get Squid Game rivals and y'all can, oh. you know, I don't know if y'all were rivals, but definitely it would be, it would be fun to see y'all two work together. We weren't then, but we are now. <laughs> hey, it's beefing up after the after the show stuff actually should be its own. I mean, you know what's going on. You see the after the show stuff. I, I know. Yeah, right? No kidding. 
No, so they need to, we need to do him for real, but like, I'm going to clap back if he's going to spit lies. Like, <laughs> Hey, well, we, I love getting your point of view on things. It's very important to see both. I'm a both sides of the story type of person. You know, if somebody says something, it's not, you know, I want to hear what the other person has to say. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to say the other person's wrong about what they're saying. I right. just want to see what somebody else got to say. Our own story, you know, he lived his truth in there too. And I know it, I, I really do empathize with him. Like being in one of those boats and just having to like let it happen would suck, especially for him because he's got a personality like kind of like me, like very forward, very like wants to take control. And so I, I feel for him on that. Like that really would suck to go down like that. It, it would. I mean, just but sitting there, just like you know. happy to make that sacrifice for everyone that needs it. <laughs> you are a lot of people's hero in the show. I will say, it's crazy. I have like these random fans coming out of the woodwork. I did not expect that, but I'm like, okay. <laughs> Like, look, y'all, I did everybody a game a favor. I took out the biggest threat. I'll take it. <laughs> wow. That is hilarious. Well, Jesse, you were a fantab fantab I was about to say fantabulous. Fantab <laughs> and so you got me thinking about high school music on Sharpay's magical adventure and whatnot. You got me thinking about that right now. Oh, man. But you were a fantastic guest on the podcast. I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Where can the people find you if they if they want to follow you on social media? All right. Easy day. All my social media is at Jesse DePetty, J-E-S-S-I-D-I-P-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. I'm the only one of me in the world. So if you see somebody make a Finsta with a number after it, that's not me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm doing a lot of stuff. Maybe I'll sing a song. Maybe I'll go upload some Titanic soon. <laughs> They do it now. You better do something with the Titanic, girl, because he was on the ship. You know, that'd be a good TikTok. Come on now. I feel viral coming on. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much again. This was an excellent episode. Uh, like I said, sadly, our friend Jesse's journey is over on the show, but it is not over in real life. She is just getting started with some things coming through, and I can't wait to see it because I already follow her on TikTok. I've been following her for a while and on Instagram, so I'm seeing all the stuff. So y'all better go check it out. There's some good stuff on there. But anyways, I appreciate you again, and I will see you soon, hopefully, and I bid you adieu. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Uh I'm about to go get ready for a musical right now. So. Okay, get ready, girl. <laughs> Bye.